shot bar. Can't remember what you call it. Next to the arcade. Yeah. Wow. There you go. But Stuart, thank you for coming on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, we finally arranged a date. <laughs> and well, a I'm, time. I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite av- available just now. <laughs> School holidays. Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know if you've seen any of the previous episodes, but we're just going to talk about all things music for yourself. Right. So going back to the very start, how did you get into music? Your right. influences, learning your your instrument, mm-hmm. uh, your views on gigging, recording, future plans, all, everything, all the usual bits and pieces. But yep. uh, before we start, though, how are you doing? You doing I'm, all right? I'm good, fine. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, I'm keeping uh, out of trouble. Keeping out of trouble. I'm, I feel quite sleepy actually, right. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm on the coffee. <laughs> but, uh, it's funny the, the people that I get on the podcast. I was thinking about this today. Yeah. The ones that I know, I'll normally say to them, oh, do you remember how we met? So do uh-huh. you remember how we met? Well, yeah, uh, Denny High School, I guess. Was before that. Oh, no, that's right. Uh, uh, private. Uh, so I got, guitar. I got some guitar lessons yes, from yes, yourself. I, I remember and that now, yeah. I remember I, at the time. I, I got s- lessons from you at Denny High. Mm-hmm. But I, I, got, I knew you before that. Yes, that's right. I remember that now. Because I remember at the, the same time I was teaching you, I was actually, I remember teaching another guy the same age as you. Who was left-handed, and that was actually freaking me out. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's what <laughs> I actually recall. Because um, I was trying to think. Like, I couldn't what, remember which came first. Actually, uh, now that yeah, you, yeah. I couldn't remember if the school came first or the, no, or the uh, out of school came first. So thanks for. It uh, was the guitar lessons because uh, you were still living at your mum and dad's. That's you, right. I, I'm assuming you would have been about early twenties, maybe. Uh, yep. Around that uh, time, because I, I mid, think mid twenties. I, I think I was about fifteen. Yeah. At the time. Um, yeah, I'm I think I've been forty-three mid-20. this year. No, I'm forty-three uh, <laughs> this year. <laughs> I'm fifty-three this year. Right. Uh, so for the twenty-five. Yeah, yeah because that's right. You, because you, I got married about a year yeah, and a half later. Yeah, so you got married because yeah. um, it used to be in the dining room. That's right. With your mum and dad. My goodness me, yeah. Home, <laughs> the, one, the one behind the high school. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But because uh, no, I, the one behind the late side. Oh, primary. sorry, late side. Yeah, primary. yeah. Because I'm I, sorry. I'd went to guitar lessons before that, yeah. and it was a guy. Called Jim Graham. Yeah, I went there too. Is that who you yeah, got? Yeah, I went to Jim from? as well when I was a kid. Yeah, and obviously younger than you, uh, or maybe until. Certainly, uh, I started. I started about eleven or twelve with Jim. So that was maybe the, was the class. Like that was group lessons. Yeah. At, um, the, the high school through in Falkirk, but no longer. Woodlands High School. That was it. Yeah, which is now Bray's High. And uh, he but passed away. He did. And I went to you because I was doing my higher music in right. my fifth year. Uh huh. And I just needed a little bit of help with um, the pieces that I was learning. Yeah. So I think I maybe went to you for about a year, mm-hmm. or something like that, because I already knew how to, to play. Yeah. But it was specifically for higher music. Yeah. And I actually I was trying <laughs> to remember what the songs were. What? Well, I need you to remind me. Can you remember? I can't remember. So the songs were. Oh, grief. Here we go. Pantera's Cowboys from Hell. Good grief. I Me- have to tell you, I've never taught yeah. that since. Metallica's Master of Puppets. All right, okay. I'll be honest, you didn't really do much with those because no. I already had them nailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you helped us with <laughs> Ellie Woman by the Doors. All right, okay. And it was <laughs> and it was Johnny Be Good. Right, that's and, that's and, a bit more my. Uh, and the one and the, what you helped skills, us with uh, was scales up and down the fretboard uh-huh. and how you can connect it, all the positions all the way up oh, yeah, yeah. over a 12 bar blues yes yes so that was what i remember from yourself well, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you got something <laughs> out of it because i'm thinking pantera to this day i don't think i'd be in much help to anybody with pantera except for knowing that they're a band that exists yeah uh, yeah the so. poor examiner came in she just looked and she i just went, right that's fine she's like, Dick. Yeah, I, I'm trying to follow the sheet music. I've had that with, with drum pu- guitar pupils and drum kit pupils. And the more skilled often that the pupil is, uh, the examiner will end up kind of just gazing out the window after a while, and you and you kind of clock that, and you're like, well, you better give this guy a really good mark because yeah. if you if you've got anything to say about it, I'm going to actually bring up the I mean, fact that you've not paid yeah. the strictest bit of attention. The problem I always had was I just wanted to play. I wasn't interested in any of the written side. Mm. So the written side was always poor. Me too, really. Performance <laughs> side was good, and then yeah. I kind of agreed somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'd, yeah. T- I'd, I just want to play as well, but unfortunately, uh, with the nature of the job, I've had to. Yeah. I was talking about one of my son. My son's studying in London just now. He was running the airport because he had to do something to do with his course. Uh, and uh, I was saying to him, I said, I'm, by nature, I'm, I'm a busker. I'm not, you know, a sight reader. But mm-hmm. 
there's certain things you have to make yourself do just to get to what you want. If you need, if you want to be able to do something, you know, yeah. and that, that was it. But it's not by choice, not by an enjoyment point of view. Yeah. So Stuart, where are you from? Where were you brought? I'm from here. I'm. Uh, I was brought up in the house that I uh, taught you the guitar in. Uh, right. Yeah, I lived there. Uh, born in Falkirk Royal Infirmary in 1971, and uh, lived lived there the whole time. I now live back in Labrador again uh, with my wife uh, and my kids. My wife's a guitar teacher, and she's, yep. she's got her own uh, business, the Blackwood School of Music. Um, and um, the only time we've not lived in Larbert, or I've not lived in Larbert, was when we got married at first. We lived in Earth for, for a few years and we really liked it there. But we lived in a mid terrace house and we couldn't. Not big enough. We, yeah, we, but when, we, when, the, when we thought we could expand it, there was nothing. You couldn't really expand right, it. Okay. Uh, you couldn't go, you know. So we had to just look in a place uh, near where Karen was brought up, came up, and we just. And we've been there ever since. And it's, yeah, I like it. So see, growing up, yeah. obviously you're into music now. Yes. But see, when you were very young, yeah. were you into music from a very young age? I would say definitely, yeah. And I, what caused you, like, was it your parents playing music? Or? I don't think, well, I'm, I'm, anybody who knows me will know that apart from, I do have a, like a really wild, wide taste in music. Although people think that, that people think because I'm an absolute Beatles maniac that I don't, you know, that's all that, but, which is not really true. But the funny thing is I'm not a Beatles fan because my mum and dad were, uh, my mum and dad would have told you that they were Beatles fans because of me, which is quite weird because it's as old as I am. <laughs> uh, it's it's before my time, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was born the year after they, they broke up, and uh, so that I don't really. So I think it was it was one of these little uh, records. My mum and dad had a, a, his master's voice uh, radiogram, the one where you put all the records and they went down one at all a right, time, okay, and, yeah, you know, yeah. like that nice bit of furniture. And uh, still, it's still there. It's still work. The radio stopped working. So if anybody's uh, watching or listening knows how to fix HMV radios, that would be great. But the, the record player still works. And um, so basically, uh, they had this thing called Top of the Tots Pop Party, and it was just all pop songs of of the day. Yeah. yeah. But I found out later. So it had I, I want to hold your hand, Michelle, Yellow Submarine, and. And something all these hit ones that are massive yeah. classics now. I didn't find out till after that, they, that it was an American sound like band. It wasn't actually the Beatles. So right. when I actually got my first Beatles record, I was like, "Wow, this, this is mind blowing." But that, yeah. I don't. It just something resonated with me. I don't know why. I don't know why I was attracted to the music that was not. The, well, it would have been the seventies, late seventies, early eighties at the time. But I really liked the idea of just four guys who who were self-contained. Everything that you heard was everything they were doing just there. Mm -hmm. Not you know like because in the eighties it was very much a kind of a, a time of uh, electronics. Were electronics. Out. So you would have a singer, then you would have a couple of keyboard players, then you would have you know maybe four backing singers. So then you would have, see them on top of the pops. Yeah. And what you were hearing, they were obviously miming along. Yeah. But yeah. what the instruments they were miming with. We're not what you were hearing. We're hearing exactly. Uh, you know, and you, sometimes you see a drummer, and yeah. like everybody knew it was a drum machine. Uh, uh, yeah, I just like the fact it was just these. I always wanted to be in a band where it was just everything. It was just you know three or four yeah. guys, and they were just, they were. It was all self, self contained. Was the thing that really appealed to me. I think that's probably the first why I like the Beatles. See, I had that like you. You remember as well when you used to get a. So when you used to get like a, a VHS tape, mm -hmm. whether you, it was from the video shop or if you if you bought one, yeah. But it would be like half an hour of adverts and trailers before the, the yeah, movie yeah. started. Absolutely. And uh, and I always remember. You now I would have been about maybe nine or ten, so just late late eighties, eight nine ninety something like that. Mm -hmm. And there was I don't know what it was advertising, but it showed twenty second clips of well like big artists at the time oh, right. so it was advertising maybe a festival or a concert or oh, a right, okay. I don't know what it was but the one that caught me was it showed you a clip of U2 mm -hmm. yeah. and it was just four guys as you see on, that's, that on stage that's why U2 early and those were playing Sunday Bloody Sunday that would be I would guess was the video uh, Under Blood Red Sky it might have been I, I think it was like some of because that was pretty iconic. It was the vid the concert video them filmed at Red Rocks in Denver. Maybe it was. And somebody gave me a loan of that, and I was mind and again it was just I used to be amazed. It was just the four guys yeah. how they could, you know, the the edge playing the guitar. He could actually make so much happen with doing very little. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was yeah. a bit cooler than just some of the stuff he saw yep. on top of pops was clearly just your pop yep. music of the time. Yeah. But this was like a band. Very much and so. And then a couple yeah. of years after that, my friend, my uncle, he, he's a bit of a rocker. He mm -hmm. likes his ECDC. Mm -hmm. And he, he gave me an Iron Maiden tape. Yeah. And I, 
I didn't like it. Right. I was just like, mm, not really for me. And then a year later, my friend came down with a copy, and it was Metallica's Master of Puppets. Puppets this is yeah. about. I would have been about primary six at the time, because mm-hmm. my pal was primary seven. And I was like, I just don't know what this is, but mm-hmm. something was just like, I Sketchy. like this. Yeah. And it was, after that, I want a guitar, I want a guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and you kind of, what made you want to get a guitar? Was it just the uh, same idea, but with the Beatles? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember also, I remember being at Playgroup uh, and, go, and, and having this toy kind of guitar, pretending I was Elvis. I remember that. That was, a bit, right. that was a bit weird. I was maybe about five at the four at the time. Yep. And then I re- after that, it was, the, I, or yeah, I wanted to be a guitar player in a band. And I remember around about primary seven, the music instructors, kind of like the job that I have now, they would go around and they would try and um, be getting people involved in music. So Just there the primary w- school? Yeah, right. but it was uh, the violin teacher, it was the the, cor- the mm. clarinet teacher and the thing, and it was, and I'm like, where's the guitar? Uh, yeah, yeah. This guitar I want to do, and I said, and it, well, mm, you, we could maybe get, the, there wasn't even, I don't even know if there was a, maybe classical guitar, but the, the classical guitar person still wasn't there, and I was like, and my mum and dad were like, do you want to take up any of these instruments? I said, no, no, I want to take up the guitar and I want to take up the electric guitar. That was what I was very, yeah, yeah. very specific uh, about that at the time. It was not just... Was it always the guitar? It wasn't like drums first or bass Well, guitar drums came or? after. I started on drums just after... Um, I, I started on drums more informally, not much more than a year that after high I started. Maybe? Yeah, then I started the guitar, so they're not... the. The, the two are not that, the same yeah, they're not, yeah, the two are not. Um, Which one are you, do you feel more comfortable with? I knew you were going to ask that. And I've been asked that so many times, and I, I, I always say it's, that's up to what other people think, really. I don't, I don't have a... Quite don't, comfortable playing both. Yeah, You've yeah, been I don't, it long enough now. Well, there's different things I find comfortable about different instruments. Like, for instance, um, I, I feel... Yeah I, yeah, I don't really feel that one's... I mean, maybe a push guitar, uh, 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 but... There are certain things I would feel a lot more comfortable being thrown into as a drummer than I would be as a guitar player. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, there's not much. Be, there's not much between. I usually just say that's up to whatever anybody else thinks. So were your really parents similar to mine that pay have done for a guitar, and then they're like, right, but you yeah. need to go to lessons because yep. it's, it's a big Correct. expense. Correct. My dad loved his music. Yeah. But my mum and dad, neither of them played an instrument. That was the same, really. So yeah. they were like. My, again, my uncle, the one that was into his music, he played bass. Mm-hmm. So he got he had uh, got a good deal, got a guitar. Actually, I found it in storage and got it wow. re- rewired and everything. It's still working. Fantastic. I'm I'm sad sad to say that um, my, I don't know. I know him, or my first guitar was a K. Right. Uh, uh, and um, um, what do you call it? Uh, Sort of a vague, vague Stratocaster copy, but very. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of these Japanese guitars. Um, uh, that they would have many different names. Uh, a good starting point, though. Well, the thing is, actually, the guitar played really well. Uh, it was easy. It was really, really easy to play. But now, being a Ry Cooder fan, uh, the guitar player, it now has these uh, pickups, and them that they're now desirable. These old oh, uh, right, Japanese okay. pickups, right. and I'm now raging that I never kept hold of it because yeah. some people buy them online just to get the pickups yeah. uh, so that was my kit, a K guitar yeah. it was uh, yeah. but uh, I, my folks were like right you need to go to lessons I don't know how they came across Jim Graham but mm-hmm. from what I can gather he was like the mate the, the guitar yeah. teacher to go to for our generation you know yeah. if you lived in this sort of area very much so it was the guy at school it was uh, Mr Tate at Labour High School who said I know of Jim Graham he won't teach you classical and he won't teach you like really in depth stuff but he'll get you do some, some chords and stuff like that but t- to be honest the reality is he did although he was teaching in the group group format mm-hmm. he actually did teach a heck of a lot more than that I actually credit the fact that um, I, I, he, I, I, I uh, my tech I'm not the I don't think I've got the greatest technique anyway, but I, I have better technique undoubtedly because I went to him for lessons for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, he was, you know, because it was in a group format, uh, the onus was on you to to really work hard and practice. But yeah. if, you would always find within the, his format that if you were doing that, then he would always have extra stuff to give you. I mean, he was a very knowledgeable guy. He was, he was a session player, yeah, and then he was also a, he was a demo player for Fender. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know that he'd had a stroke. Yeah, 
and and he'd got maybe eighty percent back. That's right. But um, you know, from what I'd heard, he was meant to have been a very good guitarist. Well, I got lucky when I was about seventeen. I got asked to play at a charity gig that he was doing. Right. Okay. And um, he actually he got up and played, and shredded. despite well, I wouldn't say shredded, but despite the, the what he'd suffered with, you could tell he was a great player. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was really good. He was. Um, as I mean. It, and he was a really nice guy, from, yeah, from what I remember guy. as well. Yeah, he was a nice guy. Um, there was a connection with my, my wife, ended up, my wife went to him as well. Right, okay. And my wife taught his, I think his granddaughter. All right. I think his granddaughter. So, uh, so He's done everything though, because he also nice connection, sold. Yeah. If you had yeah. something that you want to get sold Yeah, I bought, I bought a nice guitar from yeah, him. Yeah, I think, I, I think he sold an amp for me. I got a guitar case from him. And, yeah. And, uh, I bought a West, my second guitar was a Westbury, which right. was like a sort of... Um, Vaguely, not not far away from a Gibson SG, but it had two humbucker pickups, and it was a it was a very very decent. Um, it, or was that him? Anyway, that was my second guitar. Well, here's a question he for did you. Buy, he did buy and sell stuff. Yeah. So, when we were learning mm -hmm. the guitar, right now, I wasn't interested in lessons. I had to go to lessons, right? Yeah. I wasn't interested in them, but I wanted to learn the guitar. Yeah. So, I would come home from school. My mum and dad didn't have to say to me, Ian, go to your room and practice for an hour. You, I would have this thing, and you're sitting trying to like play your tape, something, trying to learn a little mm -hmm. guitar riff or something like yeah. that. And uh, it was difficult to get sheet music back then. Mm -hmm. oh, and not like and, now, and yeah. if you did get sheet music, I didn't know how to read it, so yeah. I had to hope there was tablature down the bottom. Yep, yep. Everything was more but difficult But see, then. nowadays, if you were wanting to learn to play, it couldn't have been. It couldn't be a better time because any song in the world you want to learn, you type on YouTube. Some exactly. someone is giving you a lesson. That's how I taught myself Blackboard. However, <laughs> guy on YouTube, you you're still teaching. Yeah. Are kids nowadays still as enthusiastic about learning, or is it pretty much, or is it if you want to learn, you'll learn it, and if you don't want to learn, you won't learn. But I, what I find, my daughter, mm -hmm. Dad, can you teach me the guitar? Mm -hmm. After ten minutes, it's, oh, I can't do this. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. Atten there's no attention span anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you see that, or is, but yes, I, I, would, I, I would assume though, <laughs> yeah. there's still those students though. They want to learn, and, and nothing's going to stop them. Absolutely, yeah. There is uh, the, the, there is the element of the, if the student that really wants to learn, you've you've want to watch. But if the, the student might be there because for some bizarre music with uh, for some bizarre reason without having any interest in music really they take the attempt they take music as a subject and some maybe it's because they think it's going to be easy and some kind of dodge yeah yeah, yeah. and then the class teacher goes well what if you if you pick drum kit or you pick bass or you pick guitar all things that i've you get out taught, of the class they'll say they'll, they'll, they'll say well, you'll need to go there because they probably don't want the responsibility of teaching somebody who doesn't want to be there either so they send you and then it becomes just a struggle so mm. you get it's it's yeah People say to me, oh, your job must be good because it's not like a classroom teacher, you know, there's people there because they want to be, and I'm going, well, you would think that, but it's not always the case. As, yeah. as you say, there's the tension deficit is difficult, there's the, you know, the give up. I think everything's now so readily available that it is easier just to say, I can't do this. But the other one as well, it's funny, I always see apps advertised. Mm -hmm. Download this app and you'll learn the guitar in half the time, sure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Playing a day. I'm telling you right now, yeah. there is no app you can download that's yeah. going to make you learn the guitar in 50, you know, half the time. Yep. You have to put the, have to put the I, I said that to my daughter, you need to, to put years and years, mm. and it's and after years, you're not amazing. Mm. You might just be letting the basics after years. Mm. You, you might never be amazing. Yep. Or that. that. Absolutely. I mean, there is, there's so much, there are so many, as, you, as you're talking about, you're talking about back then, not being able, not being able to access uh, what you needed to learn stuff. Uh, really, really true. But now, uh, uh, you know, like online internet, uh, it's just if you want something that you want to, it's, you can, it's instant. It's there. Uh, you actually, yeah. So it's up to you. If you don't learn it from there, then that's that's on you because it's not like you don't have the resources. Yeah, yeah. Like back then, it was it was much more of a mystery, and in some ways that was quite cool because now everything, everybody can understand why everybody does everything, and it's a little bit. Back then, it was like, oh man, how did he? How did you do that little thing there? Yeah, and, yeah. and it was almost and. Uh, uh, you know, it might have been on a rubbish but that's, copy of a live cassette or something like yeah. that, and you were like trying to hear what he was doing. But that's the other thing, you would get a music video. Mm -hmm. Right, I grew up, I didn't have Sky. 
no. and so didn't have music, uh, just no access to it whatsoever. Mm. And, uh, and then uh, have MTV. Uh, yeah, and then when you did see a music video, it was it wasn't the band playing, so you still wouldn't be able to see what the guy was doing. You had to maybe hope you could get a live concert that you could actually see what they were playing. Nowadays, you just find it on YouTube. It's uh, it's amazing, yeah. but it's funny. I, again, I said to my daughter a couple of years ago. I says, did any of your friends at, at school play mm. guitar or drums or that? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a few of them. Mm. I says, did they, did they not start a band? Want to start a band? Yeah, I say and, that to and, students and, and as and well. She, she said she looked at me like it was the most embarrassing. Yeah. Thing to suggest. Yeah. Now, see, when I was at school in the nineties, if you were in a band, that was, was a, the coolest thing yep. ever. Yep. So I, I don't know. I well. don't know what happened that all of a sudden it was uncool to be in a band because mm. it was always the coolest thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm still. I think some people still feel it. Uh, still feel it's a cool thing with the band, but yeah, you get that that awkwardness as well, where you, you say, yeah, either nobody wants to be a band, that's so ridiculous, or I can't find anybody who wants to be in a band, yeah. or I can't, you know. But yeah, absolutely. Um, even trying to get find even a band people was now. a ticket to yeah, you know, a little bit of. Uh, 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 you know, credibility if, if you pulled it off, if you did it well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But even put a band together now, you don't even need to leave your bedroom to Facebook, put your, put your ad out. Or whatever. Facebook use. groups, all that sort of thing. Yeah. I can remember yeah. having to, to phone up the ad trader. It was a yellow newspaper mm-hmm. and you did, it did free advertising and there was a musician section yep. and it'd be like, just the yellow pages. It wasn't the yellow pages. It was a. It's called the ad trader. Or oh, it's called the ad trader. It was right, blue sort of right. during okay. the week, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then at the weekend it was yellow for wow. some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And uh, and you would for up um, guitarist fifteen, Bonnie Bridge yeah. looking for other guitarist influences, like and you put mm. your phone number, and you yeah. have to get people to actually phone your house and. It Crazy. Was, yeah. And now it's just as you say, it's inside right. DM me, etc. It's just instantaneous, so there's no excuse to. There's nothing holding you back if you really want to. Yeah. If you want to work with other other musicians, that's for sure. But it was it was. Uh, I was just I mentioned earlier that like embarrassingly for being a massive Beatles fan for years and years, I could never play Blackbird, and I just thought I'm going to sit down and learn it properly one day. And uh, it was just a really good guy on YouTube. Who just? He, he, I'm just. I don't know how you've got time to do this, mate. But I'm glad you yeah. had, and I had it got right. And as uh, Paul McCartney himself would tell you, um, hardly anybody plays it the right way. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got this weird uh, picking. He's he's got a, a hybrid picking thing when it's almost like a half pick, half strum thing. Right. So everybody kind of does that with their their thumb and their first finger doing it like back and forward. Mm-hmm. But he kind of does a kind of like that, mm-hmm. which is meant, I find it impossible, and he goes, because I remember at a gig, he goes, how many you can play with Blackbird, and the hit crowd went, yeah, and he goes, is he a bit none, and you can play it, right, yeah. and he can, and the way he wrote it, no, it's not, but it's good, it's quick enough for, it's close enough for me, and that, that yeah, uh, that was a guy just watching a guy doing it in little segments, now yeah. play this, now play that, and you don't have to pay for it. Here's the other thing, so you you picked up the guitar and drums pretty much around the same yeah, time. Yeah, a, a little bit. A before. year apart, a year apart, a year and a half, but eighteen well, months maybe. When did the singing come in? Uh, the singing was long before the anything like that. I actually had. I remember having this thing, thinking that I would never ever be a musician. Like a, 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 a sorry, you were singing before yeah. the instruments. Yeah, I was a boy treble voice. Right. I won the uh, uh, like um, the Falkirk Festival. I don't know if you remember that. Fourth Valley, a Fourth Valley Arts Festival actually, right. and it would be at the town hall, and you would the, the, such and such class, primary school choir, solo vocal, right, okay. uh, violin. So I won that. I won. I won the um, male solo vocal. And so stuff what like got that. you into that? Because when I speak to people, they always say like your guitar, drums, mm. bass, whatever instrument they're playing. Yeah. It's easy in the sense that you can get lessons for it. Other people can show you bits and pieces. Yeah. But when singing as as an instrument is, is there's technique mm-hmm. you've got to be able to listen yep. as well <clears throat> but part of it's confidence and confidence you can't teach someone you've either, some people have either got it or they don't Absolutely. and some people maybe over time they get you get better and better but yeah. were, were you just was that just something you were naturally okay I, I, get up in front of people uh, ish oh, there's always i mean i'm not I, i'm not overly um I'm, I'm confident enough to do it, but I wouldn't say I was overconfident because I'm still like, you know, you're always worried when the, you know, the usual human nature response of, condition response of 10 people tell you you're really, really good, but if the 11th person tells you you're crap, then Focus that's the bit, the one that's the bit that resonates, yeah, yeah. but 
I can't actually remember how I started singing, but what I do remember is that I sang, and I always thought that I was at that point I would never be able to play a musical instrument. I don't know why. Mm. I always thought I'm just going to be able to sing, and I used to thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to play uh, an instrument like these people do that? And, and uh, but I, I don't think I'm going to ever be able to do that. Um, and then the idea of actually playing a musical instrument and singing at the same time uh, to varying degree, like doing it with guitar, doing it with bass, doing it with drums, uh, all difficult, can be difficult depending on what you're singing and what you're playing. Um, but yeah, that came along, that was primary, uh, I remember being in school choirs, primary three and four, and uh, I remember singing. Um, Tell you what, there must have been something on with my primary school because there was no, no music lessons or anything. Really? At all. There, there was a music classroom, mm -hmm. but no music teacher. Right, that's different. I mean, you sometimes get these little gaps where they just don't have somebody. And I don't. Maybe it might have just been that five-year gap mm -hmm. when you were at prime. When I was at primary school. Yeah. I I remember. I think in primary school there being maybe one or two lessons with an actual music teacher, but yeah. she didn't work in the school. It was kind of. She was a visiting teacher. Yeah. 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 And um, she's a visiting teacher. And then for whatever reason we never seen her again. So I I remember there you being a music same classroom, but there was no music. Lessons yeah, I think that happened with art as well in a lot of schools, you know, yeah. the art teacher would be there once every two weeks or something like that for a, mm -hmm. yeah, so we had uh, Mrs McKinnon, who I believe still resides in Carnville Road, and she eventually became our actual singing teacher for me, and she had her own junior singers, which went out at Lambert West Church, and I went along to that, and then after Mrs McKinnon retired, it was Miss Mullen, who, she was the one that took it, got, got us into uh, choir competitions and stuff yeah. like that, so that was a long, that was, that was, they were just came to that point where, you know, like I discovered the sort of pop or rock element and I thought it would really be great if I could play an instrument. That instrument had to be originally the electric guitar, but then when I got first year in high school and, I, and we were getting opportunities to the drums, now this was really funny because I'm so old that this, this was this was a relatively new experience. It's quite, yeah, yeah. But things have come full circle. I remember the first kit at Labert High School was a light blue, almost sky blue premier kit with one mounted tom. Right, okay. Right, and but what maybe people listening or watching won't realize that's kind of that's all the the, the, the four piece kit, the one mounted toms are kind of all the very much the rage now. It's like I don't, I, oh, yeah, 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 just one there, your yeah, yeah. Tom. because then then it got to like I remember four years in uh, uh, school, suddenly Labrador High brought a white primer kit that had two mounted toms, like all the people on yeah. top of the pops, and that went for a while now. I, uh, yeah, and now it's went back the way. You know, it's kind of like people think it's cooler. Less is more sometimes. Less is more. I quite like the I like the option personally because you can still play. It depends what style you're doing as well. Yeah. And if you have that extra tom though, it's there if you want to add a bit of colour. But there's nothing to stop. You can have the extra tom mm -hmm. and still play a, a two tom setup if you want. You know, but it's there in case you want. I mean, to I, I could get behind the kit and play a wee bit, but I'm not a drummer. I, I'm a guitarist. Mm -hmm. But I could I could play enough just to kind of get by. But I, I would never class myself as a drummer. But I, I love watching drummers. See when, uh -huh. see when you see drum cams, yes, and all these different guys, and they've got they've, they've all got individual setups, mm -hmm. just whatever suits them. And yeah. sometimes you've got crazy symbols and weird places and everything. Yeah. Symbols with holes in them. Yeah, yeah. But uh, give, a, give us a laugh, Stuart. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? With my own money. So that so that's not. Uh, so that doesn't count the first album I got for my Christmas then? No, no, not as a present. The first one that you'd have Well, the first album remember I can remember buying with my own money, but whether it's the case or not, was a cassette, and it was in a record shop in Perth. And I was, it was, it came down, uh, it was either down to Buddy Holly, yep. which is even older than the Beatles, and, and Shaken Stevens, <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> who was like probably trying to be Buddy Holly at the same time, but he was current. And the Buddy Holly album was called For the First Time Anywhere, and it was ten tracks that were that had not been released in his lifetime, right. and there were, so a couple of some, some of them were totally heard of. No, even just like different versions of a hit right, single okay. and or something stuff like that. And I remember I really, really liked it. Still like it. I might picked up a copy in vinyl many years after. I think it's still that was the first uh, first tape. Yeah. Well, that was the first album. And what That's, about your uh, what was your first ever concert that you attended? Like like a, a first, professional yeah, proper gig. First ever one. I can all that's that's not one that your parents oh, took oh, you to that like one you went oh, the to one I went to myself right okay or so your friends or yes right the first the first <laughs> first gig I can remember going to see on my own well again whether it was or not 
was uh, Chuck Berry in 1988 at the right. Edinburgh Playhouse when he was uh, 62 years old. Wow. Me and my mate Jason Cram, uh, who was a, a who was a pal at uh, Lambert High, who was a guitar player as well. We had a little band called the Silver Arrows. That was, that was my first ever <laughs> band. Uh, Silver Arrows, terrible. Uh, it, was, it was quite weird. We actually had two guitarists and a drummer and no bass player. That was pretty odd. Yeah. Um, uh, we went we went to Edinburgh Playhouse to see uh, Chuck Berry and he was he was amazing. Uh, it was really funny. I remember getting home that night and he was on the Michael Aspel TV show and I went, wow, how did he get from uh, Glasgow to London? <laughs> in, in, in London, so got like pre-recorded yeah. obviously, but um, that was. Uh, I remember he had banana yellow flares one, uh, yeah. which is. Uh, that, Have yeah. you had the chance to take your kids to to see their first big concert, whatever uh, it might be? So we both had, so. Um, both myself and my wife have, have uh, sometimes together, sometimes separately. Uh, now, what was the first big cut? So, uh, Karen took my oldest son to see Take That at Hamden in about right. probably 2015. Mm -hmm. And Aaron's about, Aaron's 21 now. Um, I'm trying to think what Joel's, Joel's my youngest son. Uh, it almost doesn't matter who it was the scene. See, mm -hmm. see just the being there. Yeah. And, and the atmosphere, like I, like I took uh, Beth, to, uh, she went to see Iron Maiden at the wow. at the Hydro yeah. in Glasgow, so it's 13,000. Yeah. And uh, you know the Hydro, and you walk up the stairs, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, it's busy going when you when you walk in, I mean, you're uh, going up the stairs and everything mm -hmm. like that, but it's not until you walk up and you get to the top and there's 13,000 people, mm -hmm. that just blew her mind. Oh, and, yeah. and then the fact that when they start, You've got thirteen thousand people singing the same song mm -hmm. and all cheering and doing all the cheering at the same bits. And, yeah. and then the sound as well, you know, the, when the drummer hits the kick drum, mm -hmm. it, you feel it right in your chest. It's mm -hmm. not like it doesn't matter if you've got the best headphones ever at home. Yeah, it's not it, the same. It, you don't feel it in your chest mm -hmm. when the band starts playing. Yeah. The first so that was with Aaron going to see Take That, that was on I actually was supposed to be going to that gig, I think, but something Maybe See, that would have myself. probably been really good though, because that would have been a show. It was hand in hand in part, yeah, yeah, but it was I mean, it wasn't on, yeah. just them on stage singing, that, they would have put on a show. Yeah, there was a bit, at uh, that time they were... Uh, was that a circus one or something? Um, but it was just, that was a circus yeah, one, yeah. and I think they would do a bit where they would actually do a bit of play, they'd play... And and also they went, the, I think the stage went out yeah. into the audience as yeah. well. Yeah, I took, uh, I took Joel to see Paul McCartney in 2018 at the Hydro, right. with my mum, uh, and my, Lewis, my my drummer son who's down in London. Mm -hmm. I took, the, the, a real a cool gig though, was I got tickets to, to go to a party in the Palace in Linlithgow right. a few years back uh, when a, another band that I love, Dodgy, were playing at, uh, yeah, were okay. playing at it, right? But further up, and Joel, Joel uh, likes, he loves Dodgy as, as well, and further up the bill, uh, and the guy came out, one of the, the manager came out and gave him a signed programme and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, which was cool. But further up the bill was a, a, a classic 80s, 90s band called uh, Hipsway, Scottish band. Right. And I, I always quite liked them. They're quite sort of uh, funky, kind of st groove, groove based. Uh, they did one of the McEwen's ad Lager adverts, which was right, a really okay. cool one. And uh, and Joel was just like, uh, I, yeah, he was just like this. They, they, he was like smitten with this band, and I was like, well, I know they're good, but I didn't think they'd have cut. They would have cut uh, but thing something with you. connected with him. Went to see him at the. Uh, the, the, when they were playing in their own right at the Queen's Queen's Hall in Edinburgh, they arranged to meet with Joel beforehand, right. um, and then I got an email a few. Uh, it's nice they didn't have to do that. Yeah, got an email yeah. a few weeks later saying uh, we're playing this special show with a couple of other eighties bands at the Key at BBC Studios for Christmas. Yeah, we'd like to add you to the guest list. So that was that was amazing. Well, yeah. then. <laughs> I, I, all right, yeah, it was brilliant, and they were lovely guys, just yeah, yeah. down to earth. Um, or and it wasn't a kind of like we went along and we went. Oh, I can't remember you. They, they remembered who you were, and oh, great to see you. And, um, yeah. So I know that you do. You're super busy. You've got the cover gigs, mm -hmm. the wedding band. Yes. Um, do you do any recording like original stuff yeah. as well? So I've got a little. Um, you were. So you're saying this place is semi. In uh, semi Home studio type thing. So we we converted my garage because mm -hmm. we, we came to the conclusion that nobody uh, puts their car in a garage, you know. Of course. <laughs> so I thought, let's do something with it. My wife teaches out of it, and it's the same as uh, this in terms of it's insulated to an extent, but it, so it's not really going to. It's not professional, the but though. it's not going to annoy the neighbours too much. It's going to take up a bit. Yeah, so yeah. I've got a little uh, I've got a little sixteen track desk in there, 
antiquated by today's standards. I've never really got around to Pro Tools. Um, it's just a little Zoom desk, um, and I've, I have uh, like Soundcade or the band who were the sort of covers band. Mm-hmm. We did do, we did a CD years ago. Um, oh, originals. Yeah, yeah. And um, I still write, and I'm trying to write just now. See when you're writing. Yeah. Obviously, it might be different if, if I was to listen to it or someone mm. else. But when you listen to, it, in your mind, mm. who does it sound like? I think probably at times like a, a cross between uh, a yeah. few different probably bands. I think there's a, a usually a lot of sort of crowded house in there and the Beatles like like, like tight harmonies and sort of guitar hooks it's yep. sometimes sometimes it's actually I would call it hackneyed I'd be like flipping heck that's the little bit out of that song by them I can it can be as bad as no, that Gallagher did pretty good with that I know I know <laughs> but I don't want to be that person but at the time I was so I was so it was such a novelty to have a recording s- set up. Mm-hmm. That I wanted to make my own version of <laughs> Crowded Houses together yeah. alone, but you know. But now I'm trying to do more, just as it comes. But there, it's that it's still part of your DNA. But I, I do for two. I feel like I've hit a, a a little bit of a block because I have got I've got about twelve songs in various uh, thing, uh, stages of completion at the moment. But I genuinely don't think they're very good, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm actually uh, I'm desperate. That's maybe just you though. Maybe, but that's the thing. I thought that was what you were going to ask. Did, how do they, th- you know, because I always think when it's, you're so involved in something and it's so internalised, it's difficult to realise the worth of it or if it just sounds maybe, crap or maybe not like too a, close to it. Yeah, or not like a real song. Just yeah. like a few chords and some uh, words put together for the sake of it hanging together as a piece of music rather than... It's funny, I have, I've got like a rock band that write and record original stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's just for fun, mm-hmm. so you can go. We can go away from it for years. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a, there's a bass player that comes along that does it as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we've done three albums, eight songs in each album, so twenty four songs. Yeah. We're now we've not done anything with it for for two three years now. Mm-hmm. We're now going back and re-recording. We thought you're so close to it mm-hmm. that you do you're working on the eight songs. Mm-hmm. There's, Generally, there's going to be two or three that are maybe not as good mm-hmm. as the other four or five, and uh, we've went and picked the best ten mm-hmm. of of all three albums. Cool. Let, let's just re-record those ones, right? For nothing other than just purely for fun. Well, and that's what it's for me because I don't have any. Uh, I'm all not doing me wrong. If other uh, people like it, exactly, and want to hear it, brilliant. But I'm not expecting anything from it. That's what I was going it's to say. It's almost just for my own self. Yeah, I've got like. Um, I would love it. I'd love other people to like uh, my my songs to be marketable and stuff yeah. like that. Like um, I would love that, but I'm under no illusions. You know, it's very much just a, a project idea from myself. Um, the other thing, I don't know how you th- think about this, but also the problem I'm having just now as well, though, is that I do so many gigs like the type of gigs we do. I sometimes can't face it uh, because yeah. I'm like I'm musicked out. I just want to you know sit and have a beer rather than write. Now I've just yeah. t- today I was playing a gig, so tomorrow I'm just going to go and try and write stuff. I've done a little bit of work during the, the summer holidays mm-hmm. though with it. Um, I do have this. I've written the beer. I mean, being an East Stirlingshire supporter, I've written the song that gets played when the teams run out. On, All right, the pitch. Uh, I think it's okay, and a lot of people think it's okay. But I remember one some some other supporter going. Uh, uh, like on the that 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 and that song, it's so effing amateur, you know. And I'm like, oh great, and that's all it takes to, then, to take the shine off, you know. You lose your confidence, but whatever, you know. It's you've got, I mean, my favourite band, one of them is Metallica. Yeah, biggest rock band in the world for the last thirty years. Yep, pretty much. Every single conversation about them is somebody slagging the drummer. Yeah, la- yeah, I know the whole the, 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 whole, the and, Lars and Ulrich story. There's yeah. probably a lot of maybe. Well, I don't know. I keep changing you know my mind about it. I just think it's jealous. Uh, yeah, as like anybody would would wish they were in his situation. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's he's known. I'm no expert on the genre, but I think he's in the he's in the a sort of he's caught between the devil and the deep blue sea where where he's playing stuff that's so much more uh, capable than many drummers in other genres would be capable of doing mm-hmm. but unfortunately maybe in his genre there's all oh, these other guys who are just so I think it's that thing though that people will say he's not technically gifted mm-hmm. but you don't need to be technically gifted to be good no and they say he's not the best drummer but he's the best drummer for that band, band. yeah absolutely and that's... but then people would say that about the Beatles yeah Ringo yeah he's. Uh, I mean that's the thing uh, I, can't, I can't imagine 
Well, you could imagine the the Ringo, uh, the Beatles went other drummer because they had one before it, and they, they were ter- they were then, really poor compared to what they were with Ringo in it. ACDC. Yeah. They've got Phil Rudd, uh-huh. right? Now, you, I, I like my heavy metal rock music, uh-huh. and some of these guys, technically, that it's just mind blowing what yeah. they can actually do. But whenever you hear them, they say, "If you want to learn the drums, you go back." To Phil Rudd from ACDC mm. and you learn yeah because he's just a he, standard he's got a really good groove though yeah. uh, I mean his gro- it's just a f- and to me a groove's really important and um, it's not technically difficult mm. but to do it good well yeah I mean yeah that's it you have to the, the technique to act to, to make it sound as uh, I can't think of another word groovy as uh, that is is the thing though you the whole like the whole uh, it's like Mel- the, the, uh, Mueller technique, uh, getting that nice uh, uh, thing with the hi hat where it doesn't sound robotic. And the original know. drummer from Dungeon Roses, mm-hmm. he obviously got replaced due to. Was that Matt Sorum? Or no, no, he was replaced by, by Matt, Matt Sorum, 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 Steve right. Adler. All right, okay. Oh, yeah. People to this day will argue that Matt Sorum's good, but yeah. he's not got this, the feel of the original and, drummer. And feels from yeah. mess massively important for me. Yeah, I would rather have a drummer who had lots of feel. Uh, and didn't go crazy mental, uh, but had that that feel. I, ha- I sometimes, I, sometimes I feel obviously in drumming circles, uh, sacrilegious for saying this, but I know that like um, Keith Moon is recognised as you know one of the all-time greats, and Mitch Mitchell from the uh, Jimi Hendrix experience mm-hmm. uh, as well. But sometimes I find I found their drumming at times untidy because they were just it was just like they just it was almost like just one big massive fill but see the problem well I love the who mm-hmm. but I like them as well yeah. Keith Moon was massive partly because he was in the who yeah and partly because of all the crazy stuff he'd done when he wasn't behind yeah, the kit yeah he, he was the ultimate rock star really see yeah. they, they lived a quiet life right? mm. I don't know if there would be a, as a much attention on him I mean he was a good drummer but oh no, I, I, I don't, incredible yeah he had I, great I don't ability know. there's no doubt about it but some, I, I, some of the songs he played on were outstanding. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he was the best drummer. Interesting thing for me. But he was the best maybe for that group. But my best example of it would be, and I can see for Miles, I thought, uh, it's a really good track, right? Mm-hmm. I thought it needed a simpler drum kit because it was just like one big long yeah. fill all the way through it. Whereas if it just had a, a groove, you know, if you listen to like um, Hendrix when they got Buddy Miles on drums, yep. he was just more funk groove orientated where he would just think that he wouldn't, it wouldn't be, and I thought it kind of suited and I, I'm, I'm, I thought that kind of suited who Hendrix was as a musician, but I know that that's sacrilegious. It's like, oh no, Mitch Mitchell, he's amazing. You can't say that about him, you know. It's a wee bit like guitarists. Though. I always feel like there's there's two types of guitarists. I wouldn't class. I would. I would not class myself as a technically gifted guitarist. I can do. I can get away with wee fancy licks, mm-hmm. and uh, I can do a bit of guitar. I can do guitar soloing to suit the song. Yeah. Technically, I am. I'm not. A gifted guitarist. I've no friend. I've got friends that tech, they can run up and down, mm-hmm. down it. But but I can write a song. Mm-hmm. I've got te- friends that are technically gifted. Mm-hmm. They can't write a write song. A song. They, they, it's like that the brain. So sometimes I like, but you don't need six chords. There. You just need two chords mm-hmm. yeah. and, and a great melody. Yeah, yeah. And but they can't. It, it's like they can't see it's, that. it's not technical enough. Yeah. And there's something. There's two camps there. And mm-hmm. No Gallagher is a great example. Mm-hmm. Less is more. You know, yeah. it's so simple. Yep. Okay, maybe copied it off a few people. Aye, but you know what? He, he wrote some amazing songs. Yeah. And uh, and it didn't have to be technically difficult, but he, he could write a melody and, yeah. and a hook. Yeah. The thing about the the Beatles were, were that Ringo as a drummer and George Harrison as a guitar player, they were the song. Was it? Were, he was a song drummer and a song guitarist. In other words, they came up with something that would serve the song rather than coming up with something going. This is how amazing I am on the instrument. Listen yeah. to this. They they, they they brought that up because that that fitted what made the song good. Mm-hmm. And it would and uh, and George used to say about like for instance about Clapton is that that. He, he he found it difficult to do what Clapton did in terms of just putting on a guitar and just flying away in the blues. He said he would need, he would like a little bit of time to say I've got sixteen bars here, so I'm going to have a wee think about what I'm going to do to that. And so there's, all, there's also ego there as well, though, because yeah. some people love the spotlight. Yeah, and it's it's all about 
they're playing a five minute song and it's all about that one minute where they get to shine and it's almost like they're not that bothered about the rest whereas some people it's just let's play for the song Mm -hmm. you know what I'm playing makes the song hopefully sound better it's not about that's the hope yeah but as you say that in destroys life, some bands though in life you get people who go well as long as I come out of this sounding good or the mm. or the uh, you know the football player that celebrates uh, scoring an amazing goal uh, online but his team lost 4-1 in that game you know or something yeah, like that yeah. that type of thing it's, that's the it's are you in a, if you're part of a team or a group mm-hmm. uh, are you more interested in how the, that sounds or are you just interested about how you come come out of that yeah. you know and if it is the if it's the latter, then you probably better just stay in solo. <laughs> yeah. What about um, so you do cover gigs? Yeah, I do cover gigs as yeah. well. Do you enjoy the cover gigs? Yes, some more. Don't get me wrong. I know. I know it. It turns into a second job. Yeah. So you're getting paid for it and everything. And that's, like that. that's but the, uh-huh. the actual gigs. Do you enjoy it for for the most part? Very much for the most part. And some place, some gigs, and some venues are better than others. Um, and some crowd, and some crowds that that um, go to that venue or better because they actually they, I like to, I love interaction mm-hmm. I, I, I just it's I mean if I get if I'm getting it in my head pretty early that I'm playing and I'm pretty much background music and I'm not offending anybody with my yeah. music then then that's okay uh, I, but I, I like it when there's a bit <laughs> of uh, tune and fro I try to tell people it's, it's a hard game mm-hmm. I think people especially if see if they get you on a good night mm. where the, the crowd is in there, they are wanting the songs, they're sit up dancing, sing along, but mm-hmm. for every gig that's like that, you've got another nine where you are background music. Yeah, and you have to accept that and, if, you um, want to do, if you want to do it regularly and you can re- reconcile yourself to that, it's like, that's that's the, the job. Okay, play it to the best, make their uh, uh, make, make it, you know, that their evening's nice that you're playing that stuff in the background rather than you not being there, so, yeah, but... Uh, it, if you have a good crowd that are like that makes you, you know, feel like a rock yep. star or whatever, it's good because uh, you feed off them and then your performance will you're, be it's certainly more enthusiastic and you'll go that extra mile. You're doing something right. Yeah. But uh, how do you go about picking your songs then? I mean, you will yep. have the standards, yep. I'm sure. Yeah. So that's the so good question because I think it's a combination of, as you say, delivering the, sta- the more or less the standards that people are going to want, but also giving something of yourself that that sets you apart from other people. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, uh, I, I have to hold my hand up and say I have never. I think I once sort of strummed the chords for uh, "She's a Belter," but I have never played a Jerry Sutherland song in my life before seriously, and. Yeah. Um, and I just don't, I don't really know much about, he, he doesn't appeal to me as an artist, but I'm not, and I'm not knocking anybody that, that it does appeal to, uh, and if somebody asked me to specifically learn it, I would learn it, but I wouldn't choose to learn something by him because I think there are just so many other people that can do it better than I could do it, mm-hmm. and I, I, I think that it's important you play to your strengths, you is know. There, is there any songs you, you just refuse to play, that b- because it just, you just don't like the song? Uh, the, no, I wouldn't refuse. I would never refuse to play a song on that basis because if I thought it was going to make somebody's night better and I could do a, a, a decent version like of it, I know it, a couple of people have been on it. and they say, "Oh, I just don't play the gambler mm-hmm. because I'm sick and tired of hearing it or yeah. feel some prison blues." Yeah. Or, I don't mind fools. It's I quite like the. the I don't bad mind the song. Rising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not a great fan of Bad Moon Rising. I'm not a massive fan of uh, uh, what do you call it, the classic Van Morrison, uh, Brown Eyed Girl. Girl. Uh, uh, less or so the gambler. I just I don't get I don't get the appeal. I don't massively get the appeal of uh, wagon wheel either. But these are songs that I would uh, <laughs> I would certainly do them. We always joke saying do them. Wagon do wheel do them. is definitely the new brown eyed girl for our generation. It is. And I'm not quite it, sure why. When I I mean I've been playing the song for years, and uh, See, and you know what. Uh, it is an okay song. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm, I don't get, I don't get it. I don't really get the appeal, but I don't dislike it. Or that. See the amount of times people will say, like, like I'll learn a song, like I'll, I'll hear a song, and I'll go, that is a great song. I'm, mm. I'm going to learn that. Mm. It's popular enough that people are going to know what it is yeah. as well. And you learn it and you play it, and it, it just goes down terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you play a song that, that you you might class is a bit of a filler mm-hmm. and it goes down yep. a storm this happened yeah and it it's funny how some songs just hit and other songs spot, don't yeah don't and then there's other songs people request the one I, I don't generally play is tennessee whiskey unless somebody requests it yeah 
Uh, uh, that's generally really popular. Speaking, that would be me as I'll well. I'll play. I've done it the odd time. If I, if I think Jerry it's going to be now and again. Yeah. If uh, Tennessee whiskey, uh, if it's if it's a low key, if if that's the mood of the place where it's not necessarily yeah. upbeat, I might I might put it in. Uh, I'll certainly do it if it's requested. But I would never. The only reason that I would not do a song is if I thought it was there was a, a, it's a wrong time maybe for it. Well. Uh, more specifically, if there was a, a Machiavellian reason why they're asking, you know, is there some kind of religious connotation where they're yeah. going to try and use it to rewrite the lyrics and, you know... Uh, yeah, or just avoid it if it's football-related. Uh, I generally uh, avoid that's my, point, that's my point. I would yeah. say, look, if I think this is going to be an issue, and I've actually found, to my na- naivety, I've found in the last... But there, I've done some songs that I didn't realise had a connotation, and I've started singing, and then they're like, oh, like, oh whoops. Well, i done one. i done one. <laughs> this was only a few months ago yeah. in Baker Street. Yeah. And I did uh, Dirty Old Town. Right, okay. So is, does this now have a... So I've never done that in my life before. came up to me after yeah. it. That's a Celtic song, so, so when are you going to play a Rangers song? Right. And I'm like, it's, it's not a Celtic song. No, it's about... It's about... It's about... It's about, it's about is I, it not I, don't, I don't even know what it's about. I think it's, it's about a town in North England. I, I think it's It's dumb. obviously written by an Irish person, I, I think. All right, I thought it... Right. Maybe, okay. maybe not, mm. but... It's been, it's, it. it's been covered by yeah. the Dubliners right. and that sort of thing, yeah. but... I was like, no. There's nothing in like, the song. And it, it, you get into those arguments. What's the things, what, what things happen at gigs that, you, that drives you up the wall? Or are you quite yeah. laid back? No, uh, I'm laid back, but things happen at gigs that drive me up the wall. Yeah. Uh, you're walking in with uh, uh, a, a speaker in one hand and a guitar and something the other way, <laughs> and somebody just stands right in front of you and then they just look at you. And they make no attempt to like make it easier yeah. for you by just stepping to the side or hold. You know, I'm not even asking to hold the door for me, but literally, I'm like, so I'm, you're yeah. moving like that. I just don't understand that mentality. It's astonishing. It's funny because I said to someone, go, playing playing in a pub's tough. I says when you go up to that pub, first of all, you don't know if it's busy. Mm-hmm. If it, if it is busy, it might not be for you. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's twenty people in the pub, eighteen of them might be looking at the television in another direction. Absolutely. And uh, but. It can be great as well, but uh, my, my, the one I hate is but seeing you get you start playing and it's it's say it's something upbeat and you get all the crazy women that get up to dance yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, they come from the back of the pub right down and then they turn around so their backs to you and they walk backwards <laughs> and I'm like and then they're knocking you know you're getting the mics hitting into mm-hmm. you and and uh, it's funny because. Like you, I don't actually get to see a lot of other people playing because I'm always playing myself. Because you're playing, yeah, absolutely. But I mm-hmm. went to see my, my friend's band play, mm-hmm. and it, it was in Baker Street, and they were a band. Mm-hmm. And it got halfway through the night. It's, it was a Friday night or a Saturday night, so it was getting rowdy, mm-hmm. and it was the having to stop because people are jumping on the pedals and knocking uh-huh. the mic stands yeah, over. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's and a... I'm just like, oh, so it's not just me this happens to No, them. if you're singing and somebody knocks a mic, right, yeah. you can break your teeth, you know, and that's infuriating. I've and had and the one, oh, sorry. <laughs> I've had <laughs> the one where the, the drunk person comes up mm-hmm. and they insult you as well. Mm-hmm. So I've had the, uh, just to let you know, uh, the person that was singing the last week oh, was brilliant. Was, uh, just what you want to hear, thanks, isn't it? Oh, th- thanks, thanks for sharing well, that. Well, you know. The one I always tell is uh, I was playing can't remember where it was now, but I'd done two or three songs. And obviously, you already know the setup. You know your sound, you've yeah. got all your settings, you know where, you, where you're at. I just need to plug in, adjust my main volume, and I'm good to go, pretty much. I don't need to mess about with bass and treble yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And uh, two or three songs in, this guy came up. <laughs> just to let you know, um, you, that sounds terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, thanks for that. And he's like, I don't know if your guitar's out of tune or... <laughs> And I'm like, oh, do you play the guitar? <laughs> no, no, I've, I've never touched a guitar. Oh, he's a big expert then. I did the, the, the fake turn around and pretend you're, you're doing yeah, something. Yeah, while doing nothing. He came back to it and something better. to tell me it was amazing. Which means he's basically a troll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we played in Baker Street one time uh, where, uh, where you know, there was the, three, the band uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, Gregor on the bass was like uh, standing at the left hand side of the, just where the, the post. bar, where the bar, yeah, the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as, as he was standing, there was this guy, you know, just standing right, he, the head of his Fender bass was there and yeah, yeah. his head, he's standing there and I just thought, hey, he'll move in a minute, like 45 minutes later, just standing right there, he wouldn't even, you know, I'm like, there must be somewhere better you can go. So I used to play in Ginty McGinty's in Glasgow, yeah. big long pub, <laughs> and the bar's at one end and the toilets are at the other end, right. and you're kind of almost at the other end next to the toilets, mm-hmm. 
and if there was two of us playing, so the, the other guy's on the right hand side, so I'm kind of sticking out a wee bit mm -hmm. at the walkway, and, the, and I used to just get the, I used to cut the strings just a little bit, uh, not not too short. All right, just to, so that it was quite jaggy. To give a little bit of a, a force and field. And the amount of times I would just <laughs> jag someone. You should leave a, too be close. like Platt and leave a lit cigarette there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can't do that now. Sorry. Yeah. Used to do that. Yeah. And uh, the other one is it, I always think is really good is when you're playing, and I think when they've had a drink, they forget that the sound coming out of the speakers is coming from you. Uh -huh. So you're in the middle of playing, and they come up to talk to you, to mm. ask you, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm actually in the middle Song, yeah, <laughs> middle I'm, so, I'm not that good at multitasking. <laughs> but, uh, to, I'm quite good at just keeping the chord going while I'm talking to them though. Round about 2005 maybe, or maybe not as early as that, uh, not quite as early as that, Soundcare were playing a venue in Grangemouth that will remain uh, nameless. nameless, and um, we had a bass player who was his first gig with the band that night. Right, okay. and it, I'm not going to lie, it, it wasn't great. Uh, 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 <laughs> but after we'd finished, it, but bizarrely we went down pretty well, you know, and it was yep. like, a kind of, and sometimes, you know, as long as there's an energy and you can get away with it. But right at the end of the night, I'm standing there, and this guy was clearly about, I'm quite tall, and he was th about three inches taller than me, um, had a big, you know, string, a big vest on, and he was, he was, a lot wider than yeah. me as well. Uh, at tattoos everywhere, etc. Like you know, and he came up and they said, uh, "You guys were effing pish tonight." So he's just looking for trouble. And I just looked at him and I went, "What I want to do is like you know, but I'm too scared." And I just went, "Okay, right, thanks, cheers, thanks." So I turned around and started getting packed up. And next thing, tap on the shoulder, you know, and I turned around, he's still there, and he goes. I just told you guys that you're effing pish tonight, and I want to know what you're going to do about it. <laughs> it's like, you're like, I, I'm going to go and get paid. I said, I said, I, I said I'm going to, I said, I'm going to, you know, take on board your criticism. We'll work harder for the next time. And he was, he just wanted, he just wanted to kill us. And uh, luckily, his girlfriend came up and dragged him away. Um, Thank you're much nicer than me. No, I was, I was, no, I was, I was, I was only nicer because I was scared of him. This guy was like, this guy's, this guy's steroids were taking steroids. I mean, this guy was like ripped. Yeah. I was not, for, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to come if out of it. If you called away, would they probably shot it? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. Then there's uh, the, another venue in Falkirk, Acoustic Night. There's, there's the last twice I've played there. There's this lady who sits. This is a. You can maybe work. Is this out recent? Ah, uh, recent ish. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite a small place. Okay. Uh, where I play the, the bar, don't, don't, if, it, if it occurs to you, don't don't say it. Okay. But the bar comes out to the corner, and the last two times, I kid you not, there's just been this lady, older than me, sitting at the bar. So I'm 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 you're me, right? Yeah. And people are politely clapping, and it's yeah, yeah, a really just... good night, blah blah blah. And she's like this <laughs> all night, and then she'll go like this. Then two minutes later, <laughs> like that, you know, and it's really quite unnerving. Yeah. And she never once puts her hands together. And I'm thinking, but she stays all night. And yeah. this has been the last two gigs. And I'm thinking to myself, it, she, may, she, it should maybe be like that, regardless of who was playing. Maybe. Though. And I think she can't hate me that much because she she put she's she puts up with me yeah. for like three hours, you know. I, I once <laughs> done a so, I, I was doing. It might be. But the it's same, a really bit off there. No, it might like, be the same place. I was doing yeah. one and a. Uh, did a Rod Stewart song, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was Baby Jean or something. Yeah, <laughs> and a guy just for the whole five minutes. Wow! <laughs> for the whole five minutes, no way. Because Rod Stewart supports Celtic. It, that's all it took. Yeah, yeah. That's sad, really. And sad. then see when I started playing the next song, he's clapped along. No, right, because it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but, oh uh, dear! Oh, so see dear. somebody that was thinking about. Getting doing some gigs for mm -hmm. the first time. What advice would you give them? Uh, make sure you've got a long enough set. <laughs> that, yeah. would be, that would be the the big. Uh, make sure that you are, um, you know, spend time making sure that your your voice is up to that that demand of yeah. if, if you're doing the gigs that we're doing because it's a long, long time. It's 
people always talk about the likes of McCartney and Springsteen. Wow, they play for nearly three hours. Well, we pretty much do that every time we're out. out but you're, we are singing more, yeah, because they've got bits of their solos and yeah. this pieces where the yeah. band can and play. And bits of chat, a bit yeah. of uh, let me remember. I remember I wrote this song back in such and yeah. such. Now sometimes I have a bit of chat if if I believe that the audience are willing and you get of course. You, you build up that that. Uh, Banter, but uh, yeah. So make sure you make sure that uh, when you're going to turn up to to do a gig that you've been given, make sure that you've made it quite clear to the organizer what you're capable of providing them. You know, don't some some say, well, uh, you know, <laughs> oh great, that's been done my ten songs, and so yeah. thanks very much. And you're like, uh, I do know a couple of people that, that have been on, mm. and they said that they, when their first ever gig, mm -hmm. they, they only had an hour and a half yeah. worth of, yeah. of songs, and the person that they were playing for that ran the pub mm -hmm. knew them. Yes. So they'd say, listen, it's fine. That's just, okay. just basically play it again. As long and as of course, yeah. as time goes on, you get more and more songs. And, yeah. you know, people will not remember the fact that you've already played all those songs. Oh, absolutely. Or, or sometimes it might be people will come and go. So by the time you play them for the second yeah. time, half the people that were there the first time weren't there anyway. I think I'd said to my friend, because he was just getting into it. Yeah. I said, I assume seven songs for half an hour. Yeah. And I says, no, if you're obviously, I, I don't. I generally don't take a break, just because if I've got friends there or, mm. or if I need a break, I'll take one. Yeah. But if it, if I'm just there, I'm like just hanging about. Sometimes I feel like my throat starts to not sound good if I have a rest. Yes, because you, yeah, because you've stopped uh, you've stopped exercising yeah. the muscles, so everything just sort yeah, of starts to contract. Yeah, I mean, there's some gigs where yeah, I'm like, absolutely. I can play three hours, and I'm like, I could sing for another three hours, and I could sing absolutely anything. Mm -hmm. But I can remember starting out, and after an hour and ten minutes, I would start to my throat would start to go <coughs> because I wasn't doing it properly. I was mm. also doing that thing, forgetting that the, it's the microphone's job to make your voice louder. Mm. I don't need to be shouting this out because that's the job of the PA system. Mm -hmm. Realize that that all you need to do is be in tune, mm -hmm. and that. But uh, yeah, it's hard. There's a, a lot of songs like I don't know. I, I'm playing always playing forty plus songs. Yeah. I've never. I don't actually know how many. For gigs, like, probably uh, something. Uh, like uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but I mean, the, your rule of thumb of seven for half an hour would sound about well, right. And, and don't take it to heart, as well as you hard, say. It's hard not to though. Yeah. I've got. I've got a couple of friends that, you know, it's if they have a good gig, it's great. But if they have a, not even a bad gig, if they have a quiet gig, mm -hmm. they, they take it to heart. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't take the. I'll take criticism to, <laughs> criticism to heart, but I don't take a quiet gig to heart because at the end of the yeah. day... It's not your job to bring well, exactly. the, the punters exactly. in. Exactly, and you, you then you remember, because I'm also like, I'm, uh, I'm um, the drummer with a, a band called Artisan who do their own material, yeah. and um, they've played many gigs to very little people. Their stuff's really, really good, but at the end of the day, it, people don't tend to just, oh, let's go out and see a, a random band tonight, uh, unless you can get your pals and your rallies along. Yeah. People will go out and say, Maybe see me or you, because they know they're going to know a lot of the material, and mm. it's just and it's just in a pub setting. So I'm totally aware of that. That not every gig that me or you do can be hoaching, yeah. Uh, and I'm aware of the fact that, but we do get our more of a fair share of busy gigs. Uh, but these poor guys who are trying to like carve their own way. I mean, I'd love to go out and do gigs myself, just doing my own material, mm -hmm. or just firing a couple in. I did, I played a gig up in Roast in uh, Kinnear recently, mm -hmm. where I did fire in one one tunes in it. I, and Sometimes you can sneak one in. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and, and it went down really well. Like uh, I've but got, it's a, quite a poppy tune, yeah, so... I've got all the songs that I play, mm -hmm. and uh, but I've got three times more than I need so that I can chop and change it. Yeah. But um, I'll maybe chuck in the odd one that I wouldn't normally play if there's somebody there requesting it or if it's the right crowd or yes. that. Was, is there any songs that you've, you've been asked to play that you're just like, you know, you, you'll get, like I had someone come up and they said, can you play this Rory Gallagher song? Yeah. And I actually knew it, but I was like, wow. I can't play it because nobody else in the pub has even heard of Rory Gallagher, let alone the song. And it's that thing where you've been building and you've been building, like I'll sometimes have somebody come up and they'll say, can you play Wish You Were Here by yeah. Pink Floyd? Yeah. It's an okay song, but if I was going to play it, I would have played it at the start. I wouldn't have played it. Or, I've been building for the last five songs yeah. up to this. Yeah. This or maybe point. you could do it's it the later. Wrong, wrong point in the gig. Is there yeah. any song request you remember that people have been, you've been like, it's a great song, but I, I can't play it? No, I have to tell you that if somebody asks me for a song and I know how to play it, I'll play it because it's. I feel like I'm 
I'm, I, that's, if that's just one, it just takes one person. Another thing as well, though, is that gets them on side. Another thing I would say to people starting is, I don't think there's one song I play that I'm a hundred percent perfect on the original. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And you can get away with so much with confidence. Yeah. As well, and and the, yeah. some people are like, oh, you, you know, you missed a chord there, or you played, the, played that wrong. <laughs> I was like, I do that in every song. Say that to me because they'll be seen quite a lot. It's like every. Does uh, your <laughs> wife plays guitar? Yeah. Have you ever done any gigs together? She's played bass for me before, but we've not done it, you know, if she's like depth for the mm-hmm. bass player in the band. Does she do gigs or is she no, not teaching? No, she just teaches. Um, but uh, we've never went out and done a gig as a duo or anything Would it like just that. be off if there's a crazy odd occasion where you were in the same place at the same time? That you, would be more you, like... You might get up yeah. and... We sang at our wedding together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we did uh, Mel C and Brian Adams. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I would, no, I would always, uh, it's, to be honest, just to me, you just one person wanting that song's good enough for me. Because sometimes it's like, if it's a really song that you like, you're like, oh, this gives me a chance. This That's me giving license to do it. I don't have to justify it. Somebody has, a, a customer has asked for this song, and I actually like this song anyway. Oh, um, so you've, been, you've been playing a long time, so bad. The amount of times someone comes up, and it's already a song I was planning on doing, but yeah. they, they now think you're playing that for them. Exactly, and you don't let like on. And they, they just love it. Oh, I think I know Un- that Unless one. they decide to leave the pub before you start playing it, which yeah. is always a great a great feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, it's quite good when that happens, when somebody, like, you, you were going to be playing it anyway, but you don't let on. Yeah. Um, so, we're halfway through 2024, Stuart. Mm. What is the plans for the rest of the year, music-wise? Is it more of the same? Uh, well, it's uh, more of the, uh, bookings or dictate that it's already more of the same. Um, but I am trying to be a bit more earnest towards trying to get this set of recordings finished. The last time I did recordings with the sound key, though, uh, it ended up coming out as a CD. They all self-produced, all very low key. Mm-hmm. We made our own covers. We got, everything was just burned our own CDs. Yeah, and yeah. The thing. I have never released anything on Apple or Spotify, and I, and I want to. I want to do something. And I've got friends who do it. I've got you know people I know that do their own stuff. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, I've done it a few times. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite cool. But I'm old school. I like being able to hold it. Oh, for sure. But I'm just saying I would like it to be just to one time then do to get it avail- something available on yeah. streaming platforms just to say that it's there. Yeah. So that's my pl- that's my kind of I want to do that, but finding the time, finding the time, and finding a bit more enthusiasm for what I'm coming up with because I'm a I'm a wee bit upset though the fact that I just feel that have you maybe fallen some, into a routine when I've it comes into to songwriting? So yeah, very much a routine, and also I just don't, I feel there's something missing from my uh, songs where I've had one or two where in the past where I thought oh that was a maybe you one. need a, a songwriting <coughs> partner. potentially potentially. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work on them the best of my ability, and uh, I'm going to let Karen, my wife, hear them because she's brutal. <laughs> mm. <laughs> she she's not going to she's not going to sugarcoat but it. But would she be like? But I'm assuming she would maybe. She Why don't you try this or yeah. try and do that? And she would, and that's and I'm gonna. And I, but I'm just say as I've talked about in, the, in this interview that I kind of take things to heart. But I've just I said, look, I've said she'll say no. I'm not going to say because you'll just get you know. And I said, like, I promise I won't. I don't want to put anything out that's substandard. So I will take on board mm-hmm. what you say when I present it to you. Um, I want my wee girl's a brilliant singer. Uh, she goes out that busking, busking, busking yeah, in yeah, I've seen the videos. And she's she's trying to write a song just now, and we're helping her do that. And I'm um, coming up with wee bits and pieces. The other day, I it's came quite up. Quite nice though. That must be quite nice seeing the next generation. Yeah. And the fact that you and your wife can actually help her. Yeah. To achieve. Well, what my wife's incredible do. helped her, uh, but um, I came up with a line yesterday with her song. She goes, oh, "That's terrible." I went, oh. <laughs> like, "Okay, whoa." I'll just uh, I like I says I better not let you hear some other stuff then, you know, but. Um, yeah, I do want to. I just want to have something. I want. I like the idea of being an artist or pre- yeah. pretending in my own mind that I'm some kind of art and I do my own material, which I do. I mean, I mean like I did. Uh, I, I, I once made money right, uh, writing a radio jingle for Belgica Furniture. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I, you know that was my, that's my, my claim to fame. So I, I have it in me to to do stuff, but um, I'm just hoping that I can. That I can uh, make something of the stuff that yeah. I've watched now, or just start new material. But see, I'm not, I'm not the most talented, but I think I've got a good ear. As in, I can sit and listen to my own stuff and go, "That's good, that's not good." Mm, that's cool. That's that's. Good. I'm glad. Uh, I would like it if I had that. I could get to that point where I can, because I, I've no, I've no. I just, I just think everything just doesn't seem authentic. I think is the word I'm mm. looking for. There's just something about it. It just seems like a bunch of. Maybe you need what you need to do is scrap it and start. Completely afresh. I know, but I'm, I was actually going to just say that two seconds ago. I'm not. I'm not very good at it. I think what well, I need to finish it 
and it, oh, even it if it plays on your mind yeah I need to finish it and if it's not good enough it'll be there but and I will start other stuff yeah yeah but I need to to, so bit like to like, reconcile it you know yeah, like the, this rock thing I'm doing mm-hmm. it's just been playing in my mind I want to re-record it I want to re because everything that's done now it's in demo for them mm-hmm. and it's like there's songs there that sound really good mm-hmm. that deserve to be recorded see once I've recorded that mm-hmm. Lightlyhood is I'll probably never listen to it again or it'll get so, popped on once every five years what what are you what's your process of recording where are you doing it and what you where do Do, you, doing it in here so uh, I've got a program on the computer that um, it's it's not it's not drum patterns you actually program every hit yeah uh, and then you take so you build the entire drum track from scratch. So uh-huh. I know how I wanted to sound in my head. I couldn't sit behind a kit and actually play it. Right. I could play bits of it, but not good enough for recording standard. Right. It then gets loaded into um, Reaper, mm-hmm. which is like a... Yeah, I know Reaper, yeah. You know Reaper? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it, I've got the drum samples, so mm-hmm. the because it's very keyboard sounding drums yeah, yeah. from the programme but then you get it replaced with real drum sounds, sounds yep, so it sounds like, like a real uh, kit aye. Gav then comes in does the bass mm-hmm. generally we record directly into the computer right. using this here okay and, oh, uh, yeah, interface, yeah. Yep. Yep. and then what we'll do is we'll do plugins yeah so we'll then start a uh, you know we'll, we'll go like I, I want a Mesa Boogie Head I want a Marshall um, yeah body I want this type of distortion or this type of pedal and then I'll feed it through samples so once it's done that I want it to sound the exact same setup as the bass player when Metallica recorded the Black Album yeah yeah uh-huh. and it, it runs through that so all of a sudden you've got him Gav playing the bass but it sounds like it was recorded in the Black Album sessions mm-hmm. and then we do the same thing for the for the guitar yeah uh, vocals I'll do in here uh, what I'm going to try this time is double tracking because it's always been just one one track. Yeah. So this time I'm going to try the main track and have two left and right lowered down by five dB. Yeah. To try and create a, a fuller sound. So uh, I'm going to try that. That's a, an issue I have with voc- recording vocals is that I always think that single track vocals sound too underproduced mm-hmm. and, mul- and double track vocals sound too overproduced and it's yeah. trying to get a happy medium so I'm going to try that mm-hmm. the one thing I'm not good at is I will then give all the files to my friend to mix it that's good cool. because being a guitarist it's, the guitars are going to be the loudest thing in the mix yeah okay I'm getting more confident at singing but probably the guitars are going to be louder than the vocals mm-hmm. And because I'm not a bass player or a drummer, they're going to be buried in the mix. Mm. So give someone a fresh pair of ears, and it, I never used to do that. And see, when I started doing it, it, it makes all the difference mm. having somebody else mix it for you. It's, that's probably a good idea because I get neurotic about mixing. You and know, the snare what, drum's cutting through too much. Yeah. The, you know, or this bit. You see, know, I just or, let somebody else. Or it's too busy. Then you end up making it too sparse. You'd like to strip all. If there's any acoustic guitars, you 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 pull them all back, and you think, mm-hmm. oh, that's really empty now. It's, it's, yeah. It's just so I just do that. But happened. Stuart, before we finish up, yeah. I like to end things with some fun questions. Go go for right. it. Yeah. So imagine you got a time machine. Yes. Doc Brown shows up in the DeLorean. Yep. Says Stuart, you can go back to anywhere in history. Mm-hmm. Small gig, big gig. What's the one gig you wish you could have attended? I think the one that's re- well, the the one that's resonating. I think would I would probably love to be in the Cavern Club when the Beatles were still playing there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that you could call that one gig because they did it a lot, but you know to, to say some, a lot. Well, the main answer I've had has been Live Aid Queen. Yeah, which I get, and it would have been outstanding. Absolutely. Mostly if you were at the front, probably rather than yeah. the back. Yeah. But to me, it would have been the Doors playing as the whiskey playing at the whiskey, whiskey as the band before. They done the first album. Wow! And you're saying all well, this the Beatles? Yeah, yeah, you know, just before they hit it big or they yes. discovered, yeah, it would have been outstanding to see. Yeah, I just think to be there would have been. Yeah. That, that's the one that I could go loads of different parts of their timeline where it would have been. But that's the one that's came yeah. to me first. So that's must be the one. So you play the guitar, yeah, drums, you can do bass, yeah, vocals. What's the one instrument that you wish that you could play? Well, I play the piano too. But I wish I could play it better. Right. Uh, like for instance, I'm okay at accompanying myself yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, on singing, but I, I wish I could actually like 
proper like proper proper play it, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, like a bit of boogie boogie. I'd love. Well, to I could do a wee bit of that again, but it's uh, my my vamping's limited. Uh, yeah, I wish I could like solo, you know, yeah, piano yeah. or like you know. So I think that's one that I I could because I could play a few other instruments as well, but. That that's that's the what I think that is the that I'm limited with my piano playing. Yeah, yeah. I'm limited with everything, but I'm limited to a piano player that that I wish I could do more on the piano. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you know, there's millions of great songs being recorded yes. across the years. What's the one song you wish you could have sat in the recording studio to witness it being recorded? It's a hard one because I know I you, could, you could change your mind every yeah, day. Yeah. I would think I would have liked to have been there when Crowded Tides recorded Weather With You. Alright, okay. That's that's actually possibly my favourite ever song, which is weird because... How did Crowded they House record that? Was it done live or was it layered? Uh, I Did think there would have been live... I think it was like a... Or that live rhythm section? Yeah, and and it, yeah I think that... that yes. Because that, that right. I've watched... The, there's an Australian classic albums. Alright, okay. Where, where they, they talk, they, he breaks it all down kind of thing. Right. Because it's quite funny. That I think that's actually probably my favourite song, even though the Beatles are my favourite band. Yeah, uh, which is quite odd in a way because the crowd house could be coming at number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, yeah, j- um, well, this kind of leads into the last question. Okay. So, who's your Mount Rushmore for bands or musicians? So, whether it be songwriting, whether it be performing, whether it just be the, the overall package, who are the four bands or musicians for you are just perfection? Right, the Beatles. Yep, Crowdy Tice, That's two. Um, Dodgy would be three. Yep. And then I would throw in my, my favourite like solo artist that's not connected to any of these would be the guitarist Ry Cooder. He would be right, the, okay. he, he would be the he would be the So if I had to like a a, a, a my my uh, my super group, my four piece band would be Ringo on drums, Paul on bass, yep. Neil Finn on uh, guitar and vocals and Ry Cooder on lead guitar, there you go. And then if I asked you tomorrow you'd probably change it. I think things would be off. yeah, I'd think oh I never thought about these guys. Hey right, Stuart, thank Thanks you for buddy. coming on. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thanks for having me. I think we'll get you here, it's an absolute bloody sweat. Yeah, even with that cold <laughs>